Good morning and good afternoon, and welcome to Cure's webinar, The Big Picture of SBA Lending for Credit Unions, Part 1. I am Ron Good, and an Instructional Systems Specialist in the Office of Credit Union Resources and Expansion, and I, I will be your moderator for today's program. Today's webinar is the first of a two-part series. The second part will take place. To ask a question, please click Ask a Question on the left corner of the console window. You can ask a question at any time during the presentation. However, all questions will be addressed at the end of the webinar. Please let us know to whom the question should be addressed. In three weeks, a closed caption archive will be available in our learning management service. And you can see the web address right there. Now, I would like to turn your attention to a brief video message about the SBA program from NCUA's chairman, Rodney Hood, who could not join us in person today due to a scheduling conflict. Hello, and thank you for joining us for the first of two webinars NCUA will be hosting with the Small Business Administration. They will explain specific SBA programs, requirements for SBA-approved lenders, and the benefits to credit unions of offering SBA products to their small business members. These webinars are a part of a three-year effort by the NCUA and the SBA to bring credit unions and small businesses together and raise awareness about SBA lending programs. Offering small business loans may align well with your credit union's mission. Understanding how SBA programs assist small business borrowers and why credit unions should consider becoming SBA-approved lenders will be of interest to credit unions already offering SBA programs and perhaps those who are considering doing so. An added benefit to credit unions is that these small business loans do not count against the business lending cap. Small business lending programs bolster entrepreneurship which supports local economies. The NCUA SBA partnership to educate credit unions and exam staff about the benefits of these programs may inspire your credit union to pursue business lending as an SBA approved lender. Thank you for joining us today. I would like to thank our Chairman Hood for sending his message to us. Now, please welcome our host for today's webinar. Question. I'm sorry, I would like to, I'm sorry, we have a polling question, I apologize. So please let us know the size of your institution, if you're up to 50 million, 51 to 250 million, or 251 to 1 billion, over 1 billion, or if you're not a credit union, please select that as well. We'd like to know who our audience is. And we'll give that a few more minutes before we close the poll. Catherine, how are the numbers looking? Uh, let's see, we have a little bit of a error here that we're getting, let's see, here we go. Ah, wow, it's a nice uh, spread actually almost even in a couple places. So uh, that's awesome to have so many different size institutions joining us today. It's good. Thank you very much. And now, please welcome our host for today's webinar, Ben Veaton, Senior Credit Specialist in the Office of Examination Insur and, and Insurance at NCOA. <coughs> ben, welcome to the program. Thank you, Ron. I just want to share, I share the chairman's enthusiasm about our partnership with the SBA. Prior to joining the NCOA, I was a commercial lender for many years, and on many occasions, I was able to assist our small business borrowers by utilizing the SBA programs. Now that I've been working with credit unions uh, and, and understand the benefits of the SBA programs, I see this as a real opportunity for credit unions to be able to assist their membership. Today we have Bill Briggs with us. He's a senior advisor at the SBA. Uh, he's part of the Office of Capital Access. Capital Access is the office that manages the SBA uh, support programs, which Bill will talk about. Uh, with that, Bill. 
I, I turn it over to you. Great. Uh, thanks, Vin, and thanks, Ron, for that warm introduction. And thank you all for joining us today. Uh, my name is Bill Briggs. And uh, just a little bit about me before we get started. I have over two decades of experience uh, uh, at the intersection of financial services and uh, policymaking. And so that's my background. And so I'm very excited uh, to talk to you today a little bit about the Small Business Administration loan programs. Um, and I have been at the Small Business Administration for just about a little over two years now in the Office of Capital Access. We have approximately 500 dedicated employees who help run our um, loan programs, which I'm going to talk to you about today. And they service over 60,000 small businesses a year. And we have over 30 million small businesses in the United States. And so we provide over uh, $28 billion of capital in fiscal 19, uh, fiscal year 19, two of those small businesses. Uh, in FY18, we did almost 30, over 30 billion. And so we like to play a, a, a uh, like to think that we are helping a lot of our small businesses succeed as they are a critical part of our nation's economy. Uh, and finally, most important thing about me is I actually am a member of a federal credit union, and I am very excited. I love my credit union. I will not name names, but they are wonderful, and I have received loans from them, and I am a very satisfied member. So uh, moving forward, uh, today, as the chairman had mentioned, this is about um, the MOU between the Small Business Administration and the National Credit Union Administration. And our former administrator, Linda McMahon, was always focused on making sure that the Small Business Administration was not the best kept secret in the federal government, that there were a variety of resources, uh, most of them free, where small businesses could uh, use those resources to help grow, expand, um, and, and plan for their future. And so uh, what I'm going to be talking about is our capital access programs today, our loan programs, but there are a variety of resources that can help small businesses plan for the future, including our resource partners, as well as our government crack contracting program office. So uh, the SBA does a lot, and I want to just make sure that your folks are aware of that. The other thing today I want to focus on as well is that uh, my goal in the presentation today is to give you a general overview of the SBA uh, loan programs and to really describe to you, the credit union lenders, the potential benefits. Um, I want to also stress, though, that uh, if you're not currently a, a, a commercial lender, um, but you're considering becoming one, we're, we're going to talk a little bit about that later. But ideally, some of this is, is narrowed or uh, tailored for folks who are or credit union lenders who are currently doing commercial lending and want another tool in their arsenal. And that's where the SBA uh, loan guarantee program really helps and comes in. Because if you have a small business who uh, needs financing or access to capital and their profile is not within your credit risk, uh, the SBA loan guarantee can help uh, bridge that risk and actually put them into your, your credit union's uh, risk profile. Uh, assuming that in, in certain instances that up to 75% of the loan could be paid back if the loan were to go in default. That gives lenders like yourself a lot of assurance and guarantee in making those <coughs> loans and helping those small businesses, and that is the whole goal of the program. Uh, today, we're going to give just briefly a, an overview of the conventional versus SBA lending. We're going to talk again about the benefits. I'm going to briefly give an overview of the SBA loan programs. We're primarily today focusing on one program. Uh, most importantly, I'm going to stop talking, and you're going to hear from one of our favorite uh, Small Business Administration-approved lenders, uh, St. Mary's Credit Union. You're going to hear their perspective of becoming an SBA lender and their experience and something to consider and take home, and you'll hear it from one of your own as opposed to me. Finally, I'm going to give you uh, some, da some data to take home, snapshots, some great graphics just to understand where credit unions intersect with Small Business Administration lending. I'm going to remind you about some of the tools, too, that we use right now and offer our lenders so that we make it easier for you to do business interact with SBA when you're doing with our loan programs. And finally, just going to wrap it off real quick, and then we'll go into Q&A. So why don't we just start off um, with conventional lending. As uh, many of you know that, um, it, you know, in the commercial lending market, that if you're an established business and that's someone who has, you know, a certain number of years under their belt, in most cases, a very stable cash flow, improving financials, it's a lot easier to get capital. And capital is the lifeblood of any business. And so what we're seeing right now is that it's very easy if you're of a certain size, if you have tens of millions of dollars in your uh, balance statement flowing around, that you can get 
capital. But it's the small businesses, the ones that employ most people, and the ones that are part of the 30 million small businesses in America that oftentimes have trouble getting capital. And uh, <clears throat> they often um, are the ones who don't get that. And that's what the SBA guarantee is. There's also a missed opportunity, if you jump ahead um, to the next slide, where you can see that um, from a credit union perspective, and I know Armand's going to talk about this a, a little bit later, there could be missed opportunities. The majority of SBA lenders are traditional lenders. They are not credit union lenders. We do have all types. Um, if you go ahead to the next slide, uh, we have conventional lenders, typically banks. We do have credit unions, which is why we're doing this outreach today. And we, we feel that credit unions are an important part of the capital access equation and that um, you guys have a, a, a dedicated membership and folks we want to reach and help ultimately serve their needs as they try to grow their businesses. We have non-bank lenders. And then SBA also deals with mission-based community lenders. These include certified development companies, which are assigned by the Small Business Administration, community advantage lenders, which are folks that um, are community-based lenders. They're generally nonprofits, and they generally um, focus on specific communities with the understanding that they understand the capital access needs of their communities. And finally, uh, micro-lenders or micro-lending intermediaries, which are nonprofit uh, organizations that make loans uh, to small businesses, generally under $50,000. More into that. Okay, so um, SBA loan programs, a, a general overview. Um, we have three main types of loans. So if someone says to you, I'm getting an SBA loan, you know it's only one of three types. Uh, first, we have the 504 loan, which is administered or packaged together by our community development corporations. 504 loans are economic development tools. They are generally used to purchase fixed assets, things like uh, heavy equipment, real estate, machinery, I uh, think big items that are not moved easily. Also manufacturing, they're perfect for that. They ha generally have a job uh, creation requirement that in addition to getting the loan, you would create a certain amount of jobs based on the dollar value of the loan. Um, they're very popular because 504 loans are offered at a fixed interest rate. And so last year, uh, SBA extended the term of the 504 loans from 10 years and 20 years to now 25. And so our program grew uh, because we found that a lot of people liked that extra 60 months of financing to spread out their cash flow. And it was also at a fixed interest rate. And just up until recently, we were in a rising interest rate environment. And so that was a very attractive option for many of our small businesses. But today, and in the center of your, pre of your diagram, is the loan I'm going to be talking about the most, which is the 7A loan. The 7A loan is our flagship loan that is offered by the Small Business Administration. Um, over 80% of our loans are 7A loans, and they um, are kind of all-purpose loans uh, and have a variety of functions. They can be used for certain uh, aspects of debt refinance, but generally they are for um, all types of business purposes except for paying past due taxes. Um, we also have microloans. So I want to sum up here and say if someone says they got an SBA loan and they own a restaurant, or something like that, chances are it was a 7A loan. And our community advantage loans and our uh, international trade loans are uh, both versions of a 7A loan, and they have different terms and uh, guarantees. The international trade loan has a 90% guarantee. We're going to come back to that. Next slide. So, so our 7A loan program is the program that I want to focus on today because that is the one that is primarily of most interest to you. Uh, if you're a commercial credit union lender and you're considering SBA, uh, the 7A program is where you're going to start. And as I said, there's a variety of uses, and the federal loan guarantee is up to $5 million. When you consider that a lot of folks and small businesses are searching for loans that are uh, under $350,000, that $5 million does allow a lot of access uh, to capital or capital needs for a variety of businesses. Um, they are competitive loan rates. That's one of the advantages of being an SP or using an SBA guaranteed loan is the loan terms. And they can either be uh, short long term or short or long term terms, and they can be revolving credit. And there's also a robust secondary market where you can sell that guarantee. And most 7A loans are up to 75% uh, with an asterisk that are express loans are 50%. But you can sell that guarantee on the secondary market 
and generate income. And that is one of the most attractive options for our commercial lenders is that the ability to sell that guarantee on the secondary market and generate premium income. Next slide. Oh, international, I'm sorry, go back one more, sorry. And I mentioned earlier, our traditional 7A loans are 75% guarantee. That means that the Small Business Administration will cover up to 75% of the loan in the event of a default. Uh, but on our international trade loans, they go up to 90%. 95% of the uh, global uh, goods and services market is outside the United States. Uh, savvy small businesses know that um, they should at least consider, in some instances, looking at um, offering their, their goods or services internationally. And our international loan program was designed for that, and the guarantee is 90%. I, I, I don't know where you're going to find a situation where 90% um, of a loan will be guaranteed uh, for a business, and it's a great deal. Um, but we, we'll get more into that later. Jumping ahead again, the second most popular type of loan is our 504 loan program. I briefly mentioned that. Um, the one thing that's attractive about this from a lender perspective is that you have first lien on the loan so that generally you provide 50% as the lender. The CDC uh, sells or provides 40% of it, which they sell as a debenture to Wall Street, and then the borrower puts in 10%. That is the general structure of a 504 loan, and again, the lender has first lien on that. Um, a lot of this stuff is, it, it, there's, there's generally a job creation requirement, and the, uh, the terms are from 10 to 25 years on these 504 loans, very attractive and, and fixed rate uh, for folks out there in small businesses with heavy capital fixed asset needs. Uh, going ahead, our microloan program, this is something we're very proud about too. Uh, we had a, a, an enormous uh, fiscal year in 2019, 7.5% um, growth year over year, and we're seeing that uh, over six, almost 6,000 small businesses used our microloan program. The way it works is the Small Business Administration loans money to a nonprofit micro lender and inter intermediary, and then that intermediary makes loans to the small business. So um, we have seen that this has been really popular. The average size loan is just under $15,000. The terms are much better than you would get on a $15,000 loan from a credit card. And again, that's something, too, that we're going to uh, get into right now with the benefits of the SBA lending. So um, one of the things, uh, and you're, you're probably saying this is all great, thanks for the overview of your three types of loans, um, you know, thanks for the guarantee, but, but why, as a credit union commercial lender, would I be interested in learning more about SBA lending? And the, 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 there's three main reasons. One is it provides your you know, portfolio risk reduction. That guarantee really gives you assurance that if you're making a loan to a small business that does not traditionally fit your credit risk profile, that you can then make that loan with more comfort with that guarantee. You can also generate additional income in the secondary market sell of that guarantee. Additionally, uh, they're very popular with your credit union members. And uh, there's additional considerations regarding the lending cap and that guarantee. Um, we can get more into that later. For the borrower, and this is the most important thing um, from our perspective, for your members, there's reasonable rates and terms. You're not dealing uh, – we've seen some data recently that there's been an explosion of online lending. And it's great. Online lending is wonderful because you can generally sometimes get a turnaround and get that capital uh, in a business – you can get a $150,000 loan within 48 hours, and that's wonderful. What, when you read the fine print, the APR can be as high as 40%. Um, and so that can end up putting the small business in trouble because they're doing so much of their cash flow to debt service. And so one of the things with an SBA guaranteed loan is that our rules and standards require that we set reasonable rates and returns that our lenders do, and that ultimately we set them at a standard that um, – the, we're, we're, we're ensured that the, 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 the loan will be repaid, as every lender knows that the most important thing is that when you're lending out capital is that you want to get repaid and you want that small business to thrive. Um, it's also, too, there's ec less equity requirements in certain instances and longer repayment terms. So generally it's better um, for, than a conventional loan and better terms that um, more small businesses, particularly small businesses with uh, you know under $5 million or $10 million, generally will benefit from. Uh, jumping ahead. <clears throat> and finally, a community. 
Um, one of the things that I like about credit unions is the sense of community. That is part of your mission and who you are and your identity is that you are meant to serve members in a community. And when you serve a small business, particularly manufacturing businesses, restaurants or anything, you are employing people. And there is a lot of benefit for generating tax revenue, uh, creating jobs, and encouraging innovation. We need more small businesses in this country, and that's one message we want to get out there. And the way we can help small businesses is help them plan and grow intelligently and also help them access capital. I'm going to pause for a minute because I, I've, I've uh, talked probably a lot, and uh -oh. I, want to, I want you guys to hear from one of your own folks here today, Armand uh, Fernandez, who is a vice president and a senior small business lender with one of our most valued uh, SBA-approved lenders, uh, and is also happens to be a credit union lender. He's going to speak for the uh, next 10 minutes and kind of give you a perspective, a little bit about himself and the good and the bad and everything um, as you... Uh, and he'll tell his story, and from that, I think you'll benefit greatly. So, Armand, please, please give a, introduce yourself, give a little bit about yourself, and uh, let folks know what to expect. Thank you, Bill. Um, I've been in banking for more than 35 years, and yes, I admit it. Uh, 20 years as a business lender. In my career, I've worked for big national banks, regional banks, community banks, and most recently, a credit union. What I have found in my in my tenure as a commercial banker and now as a lender is conventional lenders tend to be transaction oriented where credit unions are relationship driven. Credit unions tend to know their members and are much, much better positioned to help them and their business members grow and succeed. Partnering with the SBA is a huge, huge benefit to our business members. Let me just give you a quick snapshot of what the last seven years has been like for me here at St. Mary's Credit Union. Seven years ago when I joined St. Mary's, St. Mary's had a very, very modest and small commercial lending portfolio of less than $5 million in the portfolio. In the seven years that I've been with the credit union, I've helped and have grown the overall commercial lending portfolio to over $50 million. That may not seem like a lot, but when you take into consideration that 25% of that portfolio is SBA loans, which includes both 7A and 504 loans, that's dramatic. Because when I joined the credit union seven years ago, the SBA portfolio was zero. And it has grown considerably since then. And the way that I'm able to achieve the level of success that I've had is by just, just embracing the credit union model of working with and knowing your members. And understand, credit union is about members. Our members are our, our lifeblood. And let me kind of put this into contrast by looking at who we primarily compete against, conventional lenders. Conventional lenders typically do not help new and emerging businesses, i.e. startups, even nominal startups are usually not helped by conventional lenders. Trust me, I know this firsthand, having spent over 20 years working at some of the larger national regional lenders. Conventional lenders are transaction driven. They're all about the next deal, not about the relationship. Credit unions are about the relationships. We know our members, we are relationship driven, we are not transaction driven. So how does that how does that benefit by partnering with the SBA? Well, the SBA and their programs enables our business members to benefit by how they can assist them. Specifically, extended terms offered by the SBA 
will improve cash flow and debt service coverage. Huge, huge concern, especially for newer or emerging businesses. There is a reduced capital contribution, which allows our business members to preserve some of their cash, preserve some of their capital, keep it in the business to enable the business to continue to grow. And as I'm sure is, is, is most likely the case with all credit unions, there is prepayment relief. And that is one of the biggest single benefits that I have found in working for a credit union as opposed to working for a conventional lender. It's kind of ironic in working for a conventional lender that you've got to tell your successful business customer that if they want to pay off your loan, you're happy to let them pay it off, but you're going to have to charge them a prepayment penalty to do so. That's somewhat counterintuitive. Well, as a credit union lender, leverage the ability to have a prepayment relief where you do not implement a prepayment penalty. The economy lives and dies by helping new and emerging businesses succeed. Credit unions are uniquely designed to make that happen. Partnering with the SBA is a natural extension of looking to help your small business member. My single largest referral source for all business loans, including SBA loans, are my existing small business customers. And it's interesting to note that my average SBA loan size is under $150,000. Those are loans that are, there's very little heavy lifting required in putting loans of that size together. And it's not just all term loans, it's not just all equipment loans. I also do lines of credit to help support receivables and inventory. I help businesses continue to grow and expand by offering them permanent working capital loans. So yes, as Bill had indicated earlier, it does require a certain level of knowledge and experience in commercial lending to succeed. But the, the most influential, beneficial, and quite frankly, the best seven years of my life as a lender have been the time that I have spent here with St. Mary's Credit Union and helping my business customers succeed, grow, become profitable, and continue to rely on me as a business partner, someone that's important for them to continue to grow and expand and become more profitable. That's what we do. Um, that's what credit unions are poised to take advantage of. The way that I have become successful is by establishing a very strong relationship with my lender relations specialist at my district office here in Boston. They all know me, I know them, they're on my hotline, I'm on their hotline, and establishing that relationship with them. And it does take a little bit of time. There is, there is a learning curve in getting familiar, and we're gonna talk later in the presentation about the process to input SBA loans, but it, it, it's a process that over time, you become very comfortable and knowledgeable. And when you do come across a situation where you're not sure how to proceed, pick up the phone and call your LRS. They are a wonderful resource. And they're there to help you ultimately help your members succeed. They are a complementary resource, not an adversarial one. And I can't, I can't stress that enough. Then I can see you, it's good to see you again. You and I met, as you indicated earlier, earlier this year, at a credit union conference in Springfield. Um, I think we had a great conversation. I think you got to know a little bit about me and how I um, respond and how I manage my SBA portfolio. Um, I, I can just go on and on and on and talk about how incredibly beneficial it has been 
for me here at St. Mary's Credit Union to become involved with the SBA. And I, I, I can only look forward to a, a continuing relationship that will only continue to grow and become more rewarding for me, my business members, and ultimately for the SBA. So I think that's my, like, not quite 10 minutes, but I think that kind of gives you, you know, <laughs> hey, Armand, this, is, all about. Th this is Bill. We are going to talk in, in uh, a few moments about some of the tools that we offer, the Small Business Administration offers lenders in actually using our loan programs, primarily our electronic platforms. You uh, does your does St. Mary's use? Uh, they obviously use Etran. Do you use SBA One or something like that in terms of interacting with our systems and actually, you know, processing the loans and all of that? I almost wish that I was able to have webcam access so I could show you uh, two distinctions that I received from the SBA District Office in Boston. In Boston, as not just credit union, the number one SBA One lender in the entire state in 2015 and in 2016. So yes, I'm very familiar with SBA one. Um, I know it intimately, um, you know, I've actually trained other individuals uh, within the credit union in how to use SBA one. I'm not gonna lie with you. I'm not gonna lie to you, Bill. I'm, I, I do prefer E-Tran. As you become more knowledgeable in the process, E-Tran is quicker. For me, it's easier. But there is a huge benefit, especially for lenders starting out, get to know SBA-1. Use it. It will provide you that level of training, that level of knowledge that will ultimately become hugely beneficial in understanding how to process an SBA loan. So, yeah, I, I actually have other lenders, not just credit union lenders, but uh, commercial lenders call me with SBA one question. So yeah, no, that's it, great. It is a, so it is a one platform. I, well, we're going to come back to that right now. I, I just stay on the stay on the line there real quick, if you don't mind. For I, I quickly want to go to our uh, some data and 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 maybe you we can jump ahead. So we the the fiscal year just ended uh, two weeks ago, and so we have our FY19 data that you can see in the slide there. Uh, overall, again, we're, we've been talking about our primary 7A loan program, our flag uh, loan ship program, and uh, we did about 52,000 loans this year for just over $23 billion, uh, slightly less than last year, but that's actually a result of the strong economy. What we're hearing from our lenders is that they're opening up their credit box. They're more willing to do these loans on the own, their own uh, with the strong economy and record or strong small business optimism. It's uh, not record, it's just off record small business optimism, but it's, we're in a good place. Uh, but also, too, you can see right there, um, jumping back, I'm sorry, you know, the, the, the portion of, of 7A of credit unions doing our 7A lending, which is, again, our primary vehicle, has been declining a little bit. And, and we're, we want to focus on that. I mean, we're, we're, we're happy that credit unions might be making their loans on their own or doing these commercial loans without our guarantee. That's entirely possible. It's consistent with some of the data we're seeing. But we also want to make sure we're doing our part to generate awareness about our loan programs. That is part of the reason for this outreach. Um, we feel that credit unions are an invaluable part of serving their membership, and particularly those who do commercial lending. And so, you know, as you can see there, it's like, okay, let's let's make sure that trend isn't is in not not on lack of effort on our part in reaching out to you, the credit union lenders. Um, the next slide, too, and Armand, I don't know if you want to comment on this. This is about our loan center time. So, uh, generally, when you uh, complete an SBA application. It goes to one of our nine loan processing centers across the country. Um, over the last two years, we've taken a tremendous focus on making it more efficient. One of the knocks you might hear about SBA lending is that it takes forever. Well, not true. If you look at the type of loan that Ron is doing, I'm sorry, that uh, Armand is doing, $150,000, that, that can be turned around in two business days. It was used to be six, which is more than a one full week one business week in order to get that back. It's now two days. We've held that and improved that time um, to, uh, you know, for the last two years. So that's something that where we've improved that efficiency. On loans large in $350,000, we're now just at eight days, eight business days on a turnaround uh, to get that guarantee. So 
when, when, when folks might say to you, oh, it takes months to get everything done, and with SBA loans, that's just not true. And uh, that's something that I want to dispel right away, too, because I'm sure you've heard of that if you've heard anything about SBA loans. Uh, finally, uh, or jumping ahead, too, now to some of the tools that we were talking about, eTran. Um, all of our loans, whether they're 7A504 or microloans, are processed electronically. Um, and so eTrain is kind of our mothership database, big floating portal that, that does all of our loan programs. Um, it integrates with your software systems. So if you are currently a, a commercial lender and you have your own software systems, um, they do well. It's also secure. We routinely check it to make sure that the loan information is not being compromised in any way. We have to meet all sorts of uh, government standards in order to make sure our data is secure. We're continuing to do that, but that's something we take very seriously. It's also something, too, now that all of loans, including 70 and 504, are processed electronically, including fingerprints. Um, certain folks who are receiving SBA loans might need to get fingerprinted. That is done electronically now as opposed to snail mail. So all of our processes are electronic, and eTran is that. Um, jumping ahead to what Ron just talked about on the next slide is SBA-1. SBA-1 is, is really what I want to drive home today. For folks who are saying, okay, I have, I'm, I'm a credit union lender, I do, do, do some commercial lending, I could see maybe how um, the SBA loan guarantee program, the 7A loan guarantee program could help uh, maybe serve some of my uh, members with their small businesses as they attempt to grow. What you know, how do I, would I process this? How would it all work? Again, if it's done electronically, SBA-1, think of it as our TurboTax, that ultimately you would sign on to our e-tran system, and SBA-1 would guide you step by step by step so that you are properly submitting the SBA loan package and that, therefore, you're doing everything you can to ensure that you're getting the guarantee and lowering your risk. Armand, if I, don't, I don't know if you want to have any comments on that, but... Um, you know, th th this is SBA-1, and this is if you're starting out with SBA lending as a credit union lender, this tool is designed for you. You don't need to be an expert in SBA lending because this does some of the things for you as long as you have an understanding, generally, of commercial lending. Armand, I don't know if you have any comments on that. Actually, I have two, two quick comments, Bill, with regards to uh, processing SBA loans. In the first year that the credit union started um, SBA loans, um, I – spent a great deal of time. I actually took several loan packages and set time to meet with the LRS um, in the Boston office, and I went through the entire loan process with them in their office. Um, I did that for the first two loans, and then I did that for the next five loans um, and encouraged and actually asked all seven of the loans to be reviewed by the SBA just to make sure that I was not missing anything. Um, once I had the seven loans um, processed, I applied for and received PLP designation. Achieving the PLP designation, I think, is huge for the credit union because we are now one-stop shop on, on the deals that I generally process. And you're absolutely right, Bill, that, um, you know, on the spawn deals under 350000 if you choose not to process them through your PLP status, um, the SBA turnaround time is two days or less. Using SBA-1 will actually help that process because it will let you know as you run through each of the screens about eligibility, additional information that may be needed or required to be able to make certain that that borrower is in fact SBA eligible. And that's on the front end. On the back end, it helps with the, the uh, form processing. Which is, which is a huge, huge benefit. Um, and I encourage all lenders that are considering becoming involved in the SBA to set up appointments with your LRS, meet with them, submit a request with them helping you. Uh, use SBA-1 because, you know, ultimately whether you choose to, to get your PLP designation, which I use, uh, and I'm very proud of it because it is a, a huge benefit to me into the credit union and processing SBA loans. But notwithstanding, if you choose not to and you want to process the loan and have the SBA underwrite and approve the loan, um, SBA-1 is, is absolutely the tool to use to enable you to, uh, to get to that ultimate approval. 
Great. And then we're jumping ahead. One more thing. Armand mentioned referrals and how he generates referral sources. One of the benefits, again, of becoming an SBA-approved lender is our online uh, application called Lender Match, where small businesses seeking financing can go online and enter the details, basic information about this, the stuff they're seeing. And then lenders can filter the survey or filter the results by both loan size, industry code, and location to see to, to find potential deals that might meet their what they're looking or the types of loans that they're looking to do. We've heard from lenders that use this resource lender match. It, it generates a tremendous, uh, a fair amount, not tremendous amount of their business. In one instance, one lender use generates 15% of their loans from lender match. So this is growing only uh, as it becomes more aware. We've launched that two years ago. And lender match is a benefit for SBA approved lenders. And it's something we're doing. It's SBA uh, gov slash lender match if you want to check it out but lender match is a great tool and it's something we, we talk with all of our lenders and all of our small business borrowers about so think of that as your free online referral resource as being an SBA lender okay I, I've talked a lot we're gonna qu we're gonna quickly wrap up here one thing I do want to say though is if you are interested in doing this what is the next step and this is something where I just want to talk a little bit about SBA's infrastructure. The Small Business Administration has 68 district offices, um, at least almost one in every state, and they are your resources. Armand talked earlier about lender relations specialists. We have many of those folks on the call today. They are the folks who can help and work with lenders day in and day out with our loan programs and our loan systems. They are the troops on the field. They are knowledgeable. They can help you with your problems and challenges, as Armand talked about. And so generally what you do is to sign up to be an SBA lender is that the SBA lender relations specialist will engage you with the appropriate forms. They'll give you familiarity about the overall loan program systems, including our loan processing centers, and talk about some of our tools, including Lender Match, <laughs> eTran, and SBA One. So our lender relations specialists are uh, all over the uh, field, and uh, we're going to get to that in a second. But we're summing up with these key takeaways and the benefits of including what Armand said, which is reducing your risk, expanding, potentially expanding your loan volume, um, raising your profiling community and your cash flow with the sale of the guaranteed portion in the secondary market. We can go to that. And then the final slide, and we're going to jump to Q&A. Do we have the uh, SPA.gov local assistance? Here it is. Yes. Okay, so uh, I jumped ahead real quick, but in order to find a lender relations specialist where you are located, you can go to this URL, spa.gov slash local assistance, ask for the lender relations specialist. That person will assist you in exploring more about becoming an SBA approved lender. So spa.gov slash local assistance, uh, that is how you find your nearest district office and lender relations specialist, and that person can help you. Uh, jumping back at it if you want. Uh, Oh, that's it? All right, we're ready to go to Q&A. So if we have questions, uh, please type them now in the chat box function. And uh, do we have questions? We do. Yes, okay. we do. Great. Uh, first question is, can you define the PLP designation? Oh, great. Thank you. Uh, PLP is shorthand for Preferred Lender Program. And Armand, I, I don't know if you want to kind of go with your experience, but essentially the, the, the benefit of being a preferred lender is that it reduces the time to process SBA loans and that we, we, we allow you to use more, more of your paperwork. Armand? Yeah, the PLP process enables me essentially to approve the loan on behalf of the SBA. Now, uh, there are certain criteria that you have to be very familiar with in processing the loan. You have to understand part of the credit risk profile and getting a credit risk score. Uh, when processing a loan under your PLP authority. But once you've achieved, uh, I believe, the number of loans that you need to process with the SBA for approval by the SBA is seven loans before you can request uh, PLP designation. But once you've achieved the PLP designation, um, you can then incorporate that. We've incorporated that into our member business loan policy here at the credit union to define exactly what loans we process under PLP and what loans we do not process under our PLP authority. Um, the turnaround and processing time is greatly enhanced by submitting a loan request, whether through SBA-1 or through ETRAN, under your PLP authority, because you've been granted the authority by the SBA to approve the loans without having them, without having the SBA underwrite 
or look at the, um, the credit facility request. So I strongly, strongly encourage any credit union that's considering uh, becoming an SBA lender to explore becoming a PLP, a, a preferred lender through the PLP program. Okay. There's another question for you, Armand. Do you find that you have to use an outside company to help submit paperwork to SBA? No. Um, and that, that, really, that really goes back to my initial meeting with the lender relations specialist in Boston, who are absolutely fantastic in helping me understand the paperwork and the process, becoming comfortable with the process. And again, as I had indicated, I did a couple of loans with them where I brought all of the paperwork, all of the information, met with them to process the loan with their assistance so that I could become familiar with the process and understand exactly what the SBA is looking for. That's not to say that you cannot, you know, if you choose to align yourself with an outside provider, you can do so. But from my personal experience, I prefer to be the, the knowledge person and the point person in processing all SBA loans. And, you know, as such, the buck stops with me, yeah. such as it is. Yeah, hi, th this is Vin. I just want to make a quick comment to that last question. Uh, there are services out there that can help credit unions uh, 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 participate in, in the SBA programs. There are QSOs that specialize in it. There's other third parties that can provide some guidance for those who are beginning to, uh, to help get familiar with those programs and help submit those packages. But like, like participations, the credit union should still be able to fully understand the loan and the needs of their borrower. Very good. So that piggybacks us to another question that we have from a credit union. Um, so I'm going to submit this to the panel. It's up there on the board. It says, the credit union says, do they have, do credit union underwriters have to do a preliminary approval before submitting a loan request through SBA-1? I, I think, if I understand the question, right. <laughs> it actually should be processed through the credit union's credit department through their normal credit approval process. Okay. Prob probably what it would require, though, a condition of the approval would be to obtain an SBA guarantee. So the credit union should do its full analysis and then, as a recommendation for approval, would say, because of the following reasons, uh, we think the credit would benefit from an SBA guarantee. And then be submitted to the SBA. Is that correct, Phil? Correct. Yeah. The, the idea with the SBA loan guarantee program is in the instance where you might not make that loan without the guarantee, uh, that loan would not be made. And that's the value of that public-private partnership between SBA one or SBA and the lenders. And so the guarantee gives the lender more confidence to make the loan that they would otherwise not make. So now... Oh, Under, understand, these loans are made to viable businesses that may have had uh, an imp something impact them, an adverse situation impact them. However, they can produce a reasonable business plan, and it is reasonable that they should be successful. However, because of whatever the situation is, maybe they've had a loss or the collateral isn't sufficient, there's additional risk involved with this transaction, and uh, to offset that risk you get the support of the SBA guarantee or be part of the 504 program or microloan program. Okay. So we have yeah, real quick, quite real a... Real quickly, if I can just on. jump in on that. Sure. Um, and I've, I've been known to say this uh, on numerous occasions, and Ben, I think I said this to you when I met with you uh, earlier this year. The SBA should never be used to make a lousy loan. Uh, do not... The SBA is not there to enhance an otherwise crappy loan by making it an SBA loan. An SBA guarantee is used to enhance a loan, but not to make a substandard loan. If the loan does not meet your criteria for approval, um, it should not be, it, it, it should not look to get an SBA guarantee. Um, in, it it, should, it should be treated at Again, and I want to emphasize the, the credit union mission of member service. This provides an opportunity 
to continue to offer services to your membership where maybe you would not be able to because of, as we've discussed, there may be an issue uh, that adds an additional level of risk that will not fit within your credit union's credit requirements or risk requirements. Right. Uh, but it's still too a uh, viable business, and, and it should be structured appropriately for that business. Okay. So now keep in mind, a, a lot of our credit unions listening today are interested, right. but they may not have this program already in place. So some of the questions are kind of geared towards that. And maybe on our second webinar, yeah. that'll be a good time for them to, to log in to get further information on it. So we have another question, and I think then you're going to be the one that we put this one to. So this is, a, uh, I think, a good question that the credit union asked. They said, do you have to be a low-income credit union or a CDFI in order to participate in uh, SBA lending? No. Uh, any credit union offering commercial loans and has experience in commercial loans can consider and should review whether SBA would be an appropriate addition to the, what they make available to their borrowers. Excellent. Members. Okay. So here's another one. Go ahead, George. Yeah. Um, do you have to offer other business products such as checking, et cetera, for the business you lend to? No, generally speaking. No. I no. mean, you have to have a relationship with them, but, right. but you don't have to offer them other items. Okay, good. Um, go, ahead. go ahead. Do the credit union underwriters have to do a preliminary approval? We already did that. We did oh, that. We did that. We did that. Uh -huh. right. So um, here's, let's see if I can phrase this. The credit union is interested in knowing, do they have to wait until they are well into commercial lending prior to adopting an SBA program? Would that be recommended? I, I yes, because it, it's 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 an enhancement to a commercial loan, so they should be proficient in commercial lending to understand how to use this program and when to use this program. And so I'm going to put you on the spot, Ben. Yeah. When you say proficient in commercial lending, can you? Proficient meaning that they have had an established program and they have the proper systems and, and procedures in place that they can adequately assess the borrower's needs. It's really important in commercial lending that a commercial lender fully understand the borrower uh, so that they can properly structure the loan. You know, commercial lending is more of a value-added service than other lending products. It requires special knowledge to, to identify the needs of the small business and then structure the loans appropriately. We have another question. Um, the person would like to ask whether the, what the citizenship requirements are for an SBA loan. Can a person be a permanent resident to receive an SBA guaranteed loan? Uh, yes. So a, a legal permanent resident can receive an SBA uh, guaranteed loan in general. Um, we, the, the, the eligibility requirements in order to receive an SBA guaranteed loan is that it is uh, you're a for-profit business located in the United States and that you either have, uh, you are either a citizen or a legal permanent resident. Excellent, excellent. You know, we don't, uh, don't have any further questions on this way. Do we have any Thing from our Twitter chat that no. nothing. Okay. I have a question for Armand. Great, thank you, Ron. So you're welcome. So Armand, in your experience, um, your first experience with SBA loans, was there anything, um, any challenges that you faced, any difficulties, and if so, could you talk about them and and what you did to overcome them? I think the initial challenges, Ron, that we had is understanding the ten tab process and making sure that you submitted uh, the required paperwork to the SBA so that if you submit a complete package with a complete analysis that you've already done ahead of time, then you're, for the most part, reasonably comfortable in, in at least feeling that the SBA will come back um, with a, a favorable uh, disposition on the loan request, i.e. an approval. Um, you know, I, I, I am not going to, to um, you know, to, to diminish the, the need to have all of the information that the SBA requires completed properly before submitting the loan request because when questions come back, 
the processing stops. You need to answer the question, gather the information, provide it back to the SBA. And they're not going to continue processing it if there's an outstanding question. So, again, I know I sound like a broken record, but finding time to meet with your LRS is how you can avoid the potential of not having the information needed to get that turnaround time, that two-day turnaround time on your smaller deals or eight-day turnaround time on your larger deals because you need to set the appropriate expectation with your members. If you're not approving the deal under your PLP authority and you're waiting on the SBA to come back with an approval, make sure that you set the expectation appropriately so that your members are not frustrated because it's taking longer than you had anticipated because you didn't provide the SBA with all the information that they would need. Conversely, if you provide all the information, you can expect the turnaround time to be within the time frames that we've talked about. So, and then once you get Excellent. your PLP authority, move on from there. Excellent, so, thank you. One final you question. Are, are there additional fees charged for a 7A loan by the SBA? Uh, generally, there there are some fees that we will get. We can get more into that. And then, again, you can. It would be good to speak to a lender relations specialist by going to sba.gov uh, uh, slash local dash assistance to find a, an LRS near you um, to go more into our fee structure. Generally, there is an upfront guarantee fee, uh, and it's based on the size of the loan. And then there's an ongoing servicing fee. And then there's a cap um, on interest rates as well in terms of how much you can actually charge the borrower. So the, the lender relations specialist would be able to provide more in-depth information about those fees um, so you have a greater awareness. If I can, it take 10 seconds or 15 seconds to plug ahead to. This presentation was meant to give in a very high-level introduction to SBA lending. Uh, if you're a commercial, if you're a credit union lender with some commercial lending, uh, you know, a portfolio. Our, our next one is going to be a lot more focused on assuming that you have um, some strong, uh, proficient uh, commercial lending experience. You have some SBA lending experience. You are starting out or established in your SBA lending process and what you can do to preserve the guarantee and ultimately ensure that your risk is covered. Um, so that's something that we're going to do next month. It's going to be a lot more in-depth. But in the meantime, please feel free to go to this web link, find a local lender relations specialist, and he or she should be able to answer a lot of your questions. Okay. Thanks, Bill. Before I turn it back over to Ron to close us out, um, for the audience, please uh, use this widget at the bottom of your screen. This is survey. It's a short survey that we'd love for you to do for us so that we can see how you liked our webinar, what things that you'd like us to improve on, or some suggested topics. It should take you only a few, uh, less than a minute to actually fill it out. And also, before I turn it back over to Ron, I want to give a shout out to our social media guru, Kenzie Snowden. This is her last week with NCUA. We're gonna miss her, she's awesome. And we know she's gonna be going on to uh, bigger things and we wish you the best, Kenzie. Thank you so much. Ron, over to you. Thank you very much, Catherine, and everyone. And I would like to go back to the resource slide okay. while we're, before we close out real quickly because uh, we didn't get a chance to. So there's uh, Cure contact information on how to contact us here at Cure for you know many issues that you have. Um, when in doubt, just send something to the Cure mail email. And then also I would like to thank once more Armand. I want to thank uh, Vin and also uh, Bill for joining us. And uh, Vin, I didn't know if you had any closing words as our host. Any final thoughts you wanted to share before we leave? Just uh, thank, the, uh, thank you all for joining us today. I think this is an important uh, service that we can provide our credit union membership. Uh, so if you're interested and think that this can be beneficial, I'll just read iterate what others have said, contact your local SBA office. Thank you all. Great. Thank you. Thank you for joining us.